much. Uh, you're watching The Right Stuff live on Five with our special guest, David Van Day, Yasmin Ali by Brown, and Dr. David Bull. We've done our poems, so we're going to move into our final topic this morning, which is Is There No Job That Is Beneath You? Uh, 0207 173 5555 is the number to dial in with uh, your thoughts, the jobs you've done. Uh, unemployment figures, of course, started to shoot up in recent weeks. Currently, officially, 1.72 million people out of work. And yet, there are over 600,000 jobs going begging. Mm. How come? Why don't all the dolies grab the jobs on offer? If they're not work shy, then the only explanation I can think of is that they must think the work on offer is in some way beneath them. But is anyone too good for any job? Can beggars afford to be choosers? If you fell on hard times, would you say no? If someone offered you a job cleaning loos or processing chickens or <laughs> working in Parliament? Uh, when David's pop career went through the doldrums, he didn't hang about. He got busy doing right, done, doing a job, I guess, that many pop stars might think beneath them. Uh, and I was one that broke the story that David was working in a burger van in Brighton. Um, and I think it's a really interesting story because out of my, well, I suppose, fairly nasty little article came many good things, didn't they? Which I suppose is, is a kind of lesson for us all. Yeah, the, the, your, your headline was bottom dollar. And I, I knew that would get me one day, of course. Mm. Half a page. Me leaving, leaning out of the burger van going, do you want onions with that? Matthew on the phone going, we've got a lovely picture of you, David. And I'm going, oh, God, what? And with that, what I've just said. And, uh, and of course, I thought it was awful, the publicity that was about well, to come. Uh, now, and that's uh, why pop stars would, would maybe not want to do the job. Well, the, I, the truth is, is I, it was my burger van, right? So I wasn't actually working for anyone yeah. else. And we talk about why won't somebody take a... And there's money in it. There's a lot of money in burgers, mm. if, if you're in the right mm. position. Not if you're in somewhere, yeah. you know, but if you're in the right position, bigger than the there's a lot of money involved. So, uh, and I wanted cash, and I, wa I didn't want to have a two-year project that I would take into some producer's room, and then yeah. somebody a lot younger than me would probably say, actually, that's no good, don't want to do it. I, I wanted cash, I like to go to the Caribbean at Christmas and enjoy myself. So, um, I didn't actually sort of need to do it. I was still working in Cabaret, which I tried to explain to you, Matthew, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, no, 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 yeah, mate, well, bottom yeah. dollar. So that went out, and, of course, my wife at the time was very embarrassed about it. I didn't see what the fuss was all about myself. I, I thought, well, I'm selling burgers. I sell burgers, I sell records. Let, let's I'd cut rather to the because time is short. You then get a phone call from Richard Branson's lot. Of course. Uh, um, Esther Branson, Trisha, I had all me on the shows, and then Branson calls and says, David, we're going to make a commercial about your life. I said, well, brilliant. I said, what's it about? What's it? He said, well, the gist of it being, if you don't look after your money, you'll end up <laughs> like David Van <laughs> Day selling burgers. Oh, oh, God. He said, well, I said, we're going to pay a lot of money for it. <laughs> and out of that, then everybody wants to be on their shows about yeah. getting fame, right. losing fame, and all now, of that. Let's say it wasn't burgers. Would you have clean lose if you had to? If there was no other job going and you needed money, oh, would, you have, would you have done it? Would, done is there it, any yeah. job that you would consider beneath you? I wouldn't go and kill Roy Silk. <laughs> <laughs> he invited me on, and I said, no way am I doing that. And no way okay. would I do the line-up on the Buzzcocks, but they okay. had me on the panel, but there you go. Now, Yasmin, why don't 600,000 jobs disappear like that with all these people on the dole? Well, this is... I've always argued this, or even on your show, that when people say, why are the immigrants taking all the jobs, that is because so many people in this country think it's beneath them. And I wouldn't go on Kilroy either. <laughs> um, but there are some jobs I couldn't do, anything oh. to do with animals, you know, I, I'm just so scared of animals, I couldn't do that. But I don't think, you know, if you're an immigrant like I am, we've done rubbish jobs, you know, as we try to make it, moving to a yeah. new country, so yeah. you, you have that no mindset. Jobs. No, no jobs really. If yeah, you've got... really got good friends, then they're going to understand your position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those ones that will cross the road, they they're not worth knowing you. anyway. Yeah. Actually, yeah. they okay. would admire uh, you yeah, for it. Absolutely, I would do any job. But last night, I did read an exhibition myself because I wanted to save some money for the rest of the company. So, yeah, I, I would do anything. I have done it. I've done all sorts of things, from servicing tractors to fruit picking to anything. You have to make your own luck in this world. OK, OK. I don't mean this as a assault on people that are on unemployment benefit, but it does, you know, it is extraordinary that we have 1.7 million people unemployed and over 600,000 jobs going begging. Um, I'm just thinking, there's, and David, of course, is not the only star to get his hands dirty when showbiz worked right up. Peter Dean, who was Pete Bill in East Enders, Kef, Kef! He worked as a car park attendant. Uh, well, Jeffrey Hayes, uh, from the kids' favourite Rainbow, uh, stacked supermarket shelves. Let's find out uh, whether there are any jobs out there that you would consider beneath you. I wouldn't appear on Jeremy Vile's show. Amy, let's have uh, a call, <laughs> okay, please. Okay, let's start with Wayne from Sheffield on line one. Morning, Wayne. Morning. Uh, is there any job you wouldn't do? No, I've done all sorts in me, uh, sort of life so far. Uh, I've got a really tough gig at the moment. I'm a full-time carer for my partner. Right. Uh, what kind of jobs have you done? Uh, fruit picking, yeah. uh, working in fields, working in food factories, abattoirs. 
Mm. Working in a, a game factory, sucking feathers, guts out of a machine. Oh, God, OK. And uh, uh, would you literally do anything if you, if you, to get the money? Uh, my £10 is just as good as yours. £10 or Queen's £10. So, yeah, I'd do anything. Yeah. OK, Wayne, thank you very much. Is there another? OK, let's go to Anne on line three. Anne, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, any job that you would consider beneath you? Uh, no, not really, no, but good it really you. does miss me. Go on. Uh, when you say about jobs beneath you, you know, a job's a job. It's, it, gets, it, it earns you money, it puts kids, it clothes on your kids' backs, it pays your mortgage and everything else. You should be happy you've got a job. And it just missed me so much that people keep... If people keep down in the job, saying, oh, if job's beneath me, we're always going to be, you know, stigmatised. What, what do you do, Anne? What do you do for a living? I'm actually a cleaner, and I work a clean in the hospital, mm -hmm. which, by the way, has a 98% cleaning record, so... <laughs> Good for you. And we get blamed for MRSA things and everything else, and a nursing home. Mm. And uh, it just annoys me that... People do look down on you because and, you do a cleaning job. That's the whole point of the discussion. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Having any job has got to be better than no job at yeah. all. Uh, and that's your lot for today. A huge thank you to David for being such a great sport. Nice to see you. Good luck uh, with uh, Living TV. Yasmin and David, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Give it up for our special panel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> nice one. Uh, tomorrow, pub landlord Al Murray will be serving time, not pints, on the panel, while Angela Mutanda will be offering advice to anyone who's afraid of ending up alone. Bye for now.